and welcome back to the polymer clay channel my name is gail and i take you through polymer clay tutorials as to how to make things i firstly would like to say happy new year and welcome to 2021 i'm so happy about this it's a new year it's a fresh start for a lot of people i just want to say also thank you so much to all my subscribers it's wonderful to have an audience and it just inspires me to go even further so as i said without further ado i'm going to make a seahorse today it's going to be a flat seahorse and it's going to have a quite a 3d effect so let's get into it okay so i'm just going to go through the tools that i'll be using today I've got um, three types of clay here. These are all FIMO effect, but they're all different colours. So this one's pearl, marble, and silver. Moving on to the um, mica powders. These are this is a green sort of colour. This one's more of a blue, but they are similar sort of aquamarine colours, which goes really well with this glitter that I've got here. So that's sort of a mixture of both of those colours. Then I've got two from the colour shack. One is antique gold, and one is pearl white. And then I've got Dovecraft Ultra Fine Glitter as well. So this is really good for if you want um, a frosted look. And I actually used that on my snowman um, video that I did uh, last week. Um, and it gives like a almost a snowy effect, so it's quite nice. So I've got some other decorations here as well. So these are like little bead casings. They look like little flowers. And they've got a really pretty sort of holographic effect to them as well, along with these ones as well. So these have got a flat edge. So the backs are flat, so I'm going to stick those on the design once it's finished. And then I've got some silver ones here. And then lastly, two for the eyes. So they're the decorations that are going to go on the outside. For today's project, it's going to be a majority of sculpting. So I am going to use quite a lot of these tools. And these are ones with the rubber ends on them. And these are the dotting tools. They come in three different sizes and I've got small, medium and large and I'll be using all of them today. I also use my pointing tool. Some people call it a needle tool. I use this pretty much for everything um, in terms of, sort of making lines on things. It's really great for that. And also it's handy for when you're threading ribbon and stuff like that as well. So that's really great. Um, the other three I'm going to be using will be my craft knife, um, the tissue blade here, and also this is for the dusting um, of the mica powder. So there are the tools and let's get started. So I'm going to start with this grey shape um, and just sort of smooth it out at the same time as making it a little softer. This is soft clay so some of it is effect, some of it's soft, it's a big mixture um, and I also use some of the effects silver as well to give it a nice shine. So what I'm doing here is just smoothing it out so what I want is like a belly shape um, which is what I've been creating here um, I'm not too worried about any of the marks at the moment it has actually got some um, some effects in there as well which are what the little dots are I don't know if you can see them um, but yeah I wanted that to be part of it so I'm just creating this sort of shape at the moment and this is the problem when you wear rings so I've got a mark there now but as it's quite soft it will come out quite easily so um, it's a bit of a banana shape at the minute. So what I'm going to do now is turn it around. So this will become the head part and this the tail. I probably won't use all of this. Um, some of it will come off, but as I go, I'm just stretching it out a little bit. So this will become the tail and this will become the head here. I'm doing here is just squeezing and pressing with my fingers um, and getting that nice point which is going to create the curl for the tail
Okay, so I spent a bit of time just manipulating that round. So I've got a head part here. Um, I think this is too big. <laughs> um, so what I might do is just smooth that out and perhaps cut a little bit off. Made some spikes as you saw, and it was just about um, pressing and nipping and then making it as long um, as you can get it or as long as you want it. Um, and I'm just making these um, in different sizes really. I mean, I'm, I've never made one, so I'm just going by what I remember from what I've researched um, and just sort of going with it really. Um, you might want to make them with a few more spikes. You want to make, um, you might want to make it slightly different around here. Um, I've seen some seahorses where they go this way and I've seen some that go the other way. So I actually quite like this way round. So it's got like an S shape. So what I've done is just popped it round and I'm continually pressing and smoothing as this keeps the clay nice and soft and easily um, to be sort of moved around. And then for whatever reason, if I decide to do a different angle or make more spikes, it's nice and soft, ready to go. So I'm just gonna do the tail part here now um, and that's gonna curl under and probably make it a lot thinner so I'm probably going to make it quite a lot thinner all the way up to about here and then I'm going to curl it round and, and then I'm just going to have a look at the, how it looks um, as I said I've never made one before so I'm kind of learning at the same time I love seahorses, I love how they look and how pretty they are when I did my research I looked at all different types so I looked at realistic ones, I looked at more cartoon looking ones um, I never know what I'm going to come up with. Um, I never know whether it's going to be realistic or anything like that. Um, and I generally sort of make things that look like what they're supposed to, but they have sort of a, a cartoon look to them as well. Very rarely do I make anything that's realistic. I don't know if I'm that good, to be honest. Um, but I just go with it. And, and half of playing with clay is just to have fun. I never expect to make something um, that looks dead on what I've researched. I look at several different photos um, on the internet. I also have a look at other YouTube tutorials um, and just see what other people are making and how they're doing them. Um, sometimes I uh, look at um, how different ways, how they make parts of it. So I'll perhaps like a nose of something and then the back of something else. And I put them two together. So I sort of come up with my own designs. Um, it's important to sort of, when you're doing something, have patience. Um, I read on one of my uh, chats, my group chats on Facebook, um, that a lot of people say, oh, it looks nothing like what I've, what I've looked at or I can't make this. Just give it a go. Anything that you come out with is better than sitting there with one block of clay. Um, so, you know, just try it out. And if it doesn't look like how you want it to, just keep going and keep researching. Um, there's lots of people out there that make all different sorts of things. And it's really important to work out your own design and work out your own um, style as well. Um, I've got my own style and there's lots of other YouTubers out there and also lots of um, other people that say for example on Pinterest they've all got their own styles and I think they're all you know individually great so it's important to look at what you want to do and create what you want to create as well so okay so what I'm doing here is just continuing to smooth when you make something that's thinner um, and it's going to bend as well it's important to make this part really really soft um, otherwise it will crack when you roll it. So when you start to roll it, um, if you see a split here, um, you'll know that it's not quite soft enough. So I've been playing with it for quite a bit, um, just to make sure that when I do roll it, it doesn't crack. Okay, so here we go, wish me luck. Okay, so I didn't like that, I thought it was horrendous. <laughs> so it was too curly and this part was too thin. So as you notice, I've roughly just stuck it back together. So it's now thicker. And I don't think it's gonna matter too much that I've got a bit here. I'm just gonna smooth that out slightly, bring it back to its thickness. And you can do that by pressing it together and bringing, it, bringing your fingers together and you will get the thickness back. So as I said, polymer clay is just like really fascinating. Um, if you do something wrong, um, just play with it and see what you can come up with basically. See if you can 
get it to look how you want it to. I've made this a little bit rougher because obviously it's going to have a lot of pattern in it as seahorses tails do. I'm just going to point that a tiny bit so I can get a nice curl, turn it round and I think it won't matter too much that it's got that line in it that adds to it. Okay, just to give you an idea of just how big this is, um, sometimes things that I make do come out a lot bigger than expected. So this is about 20 centimetres. You can either hang it or pop a magnet on it. And I'll probably do both. So I'll pop a little hole in the top so I can hang it if I want to. And then I'll pop magnets on the back just to, to see which I prefer really. Um, I have got a lot of fridge magnets that are quite big. Um, and I just like them. I just think they're more decorative and um, I don't know, a little, little bit more work to it. And it just makes me happy when I look at my fridge. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier. The clay wasn't as soft here, so it's split. So what I'm going to do is pull that off. I'm not going to worry too much. I'm literally going to make this softer at the end here. I'm going to roll this, make this nice and soft. And then I'm going to attach it to this part here. Overlap it quite a lot so that it's got the strength. And then just gently push together and soften and the line will disappear and then you can continue these are the sort of things that we come across as all people all artists with polymer clay and you just got to go with it sometimes it doesn't work out and i kind of proved that really um, so literally just keep softening until you get it to um, the width that you want it to again i'm being quite rough with this so i'm just literally pushing it together and eventually, if you keep smoothing here, you won't see the lines. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing now. Curl it round. Eventually, I'll come to something that I quite like. <laughs> there you go. You wouldn't know it wasn't ever there. So that's the good thing about polymer clay. Um, obviously, the tail uh, was too long um, and then it cracked. It wasn't, wa wasn't warm enough. Um, so then I just rolled up the clay, made it softer and then stuck it back on and away it goes. So if things do break while you're making something, don't panic because to be honest I like this better than I did originally. So um, things that go wrong can easily be fixed. I'm just creating the seahorse belly now, making sure that it sticks out nicely. I like seahorses with a bit of a fat belly. Um, a lot of them seem to have this kind of shape to them so i'm just creating that now and making sure that it's smooth another reason for making it nice and smooth and soft is that when you go to print it or put any marks in it um, it will look really good if you've got it nice and soft to start off with um, i'm amazed at this clay actually because it's a mixture you don't actually know how it's going to react because it's a mixture of soft and effects and sometimes that can be well, like mush really. It can it can um, be really difficult to manipulate um, and get it into the shape you want to. Um, I used to use a lot of classic um, and also professional, um, but it really does depend on what you're making. If if you want to put in the effort with, with classic, go ahead, but um, it takes an awful long time to condition. As I said, if you put the effort in, if you're making really fine details or like little flowers and things like that, it's perfect for that. Professional can be really sticky, so if you get it too soft, it will hold its shape, but it will be quite sticky to work with and therefore pick up an awful lot of fingerprints and things like that. Talking about fingerprints, if you do press on something and you make a, um, a really nasty fingerprint, the best way to get rid of it is to smooth it with your finger and keep going until it disappears. The other way you can do it is use hot water uh, with a cotton pad and then just smooth over. So for example, if you're almost done and you accidentally put a fingerprint in it or something like that, that you can't re-roll or, or put too much pressure on it to get rid of it, um, I recommend using uh, hot water. Do it gently because it will fluff up the clay eventually or make it a little bubbly. Um, do it gently and it will eventually come off. You may not be able to see, but I've got some fluff and bits and bobs at the top here, and that's exactly what I'll be doing later on in the video. So I did quite a lot of editing off camera, to be honest. The tail, um, I found, kept either being too wide or too thin, 
Um, I think I've got it to a stage that I quite like it. It's not um, what I was headed for originally. I think this is a bit too curly still, but I'm going to go with it because, again, it's clay and it might turn out to be fabulous. You never know. Um, so what I'm going to do now is make some decorations. So it will include the face, um, the eye, um, and then obviously the details around here. I'll be making the main decorations along the body part as well. And this film will involve... Um, lots of little dots and marks with the tools that I've got here like the dotter tools um, these have been really handy for smoothing so I've used this for smoothing out particularly this one here around here um, I have made the tail quite rough the reason for that is because it's going to have obviously the little marks in it all the way along um, so you won't really see where I've um, put nail marks in and, and things like that I'm quite casual about clay in general um, if something doesn't go right, I'm not frightened to roll it up and start again. Um, and I recommend this, um, to be honest with you, because if it's going wrong um, and you're not feeling it, roll it up, start again, and quite often you'll, either, you'll do it quicker and quite often better. So I'm going to make, uh, so I'm going to start with the decorations through the middle now.
So you might have noticed there's been a lot of changes and the reason for that is because my camera ran out of battery and there I was merrily making away and yeah so I've lost a lot of footage but I'm just taking you through what I've actually done. So here are the major changes so I've got the little spikes along here now and I've made a little fin. Now big thing here down the bottom I've decided that it is actually better this way round so going that way it looks good but i actually prefer it this way finally it actually looks how i want it to and i've got the curl how i want it to so that's really good not sure whether i showed the eye there so i just used the dotting tool to push in and then used a ball and pushed that in on top which gives it a nice rim there so i think that brings you about up to date <laughs> other than the dots here i've just popped those um, little holes in all the way along and just did that with this dotting tool really simple stuff so um, I'm not ever gonna be able to show you how I did that however what I can do is just show you on this how it is possible to create the little spiky bits so if this was it I would use the ball and press like this really deep and then press again and then with that you can create a nice point and that's basically how I did those little parts along there. It does take some time, it does take a little bit of messing around with it and getting the points right the way you want them and that sort of thing but I tell you what it's not too bad once you get the practice. So what I'm going to do now is further decoration. So I'm going to follow this line along here and I'm going to put some small and big dents in there with these dotting tools. So little dots all the way along around here. And then I'll find a stamp. I'm not sure which one yet, but I'm just going to make some uh, patterns on this bit here. And then of course the um, pattern along the tail there. So that's what I'm going to do next. Change my mind. Gotta give me something, cause I'm not blind.
Right, so I've just done the bottom half around here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is this part here, but I'm going to use the bigger tool. So this is one of the ones I don't use very often, but it's very similar to these ones that I've got here. Um, and this and this one is the largest one. So I'm going to use that on this part here.
right so as you can see i've finished the majority now of the textures um, i'll start from the top here so we've got nice points here um, sharp edges all the way along here um, for the points and throughout the design i've done the dots with this dotting tool which works really well so that made a rounder sort of shape um, and then if you put them close together it sort of turns into a hexagonal shape so it actually worked really well i was quite impressed with that then i sort of um, thought i'd do some sculpting around here but it doesn't really work out so i've made some little swirls to go in there and i think that looks a lot better and then to complement i've got some up the top there I have decided, um, as I said earlier, to make the um, seahorse tail this way round. I liked it how it was, but to be honest with you, it looks more like a seahorse this way round. And I have seen both. I've seen seahorses with the tails front and back, but I did actually prefer it like this. Then I've done the little fin here, and basically he is now ready for the mica powders and the glitters and the final part um, i just want to point out at the top here he is absolutely massive so i'm just going to take my ruler out um, he is actually 24 centimeters um, long so very big and i've decided that he's going to be too big for a fridge magnet um, which sometimes happens so i've made a big hole in the top here and literally i just did that with the dotting tool and i'm going to be able to hang that up now so I've done that hole before baking this time because I wanted the hole really big. I do have um, a mini drill piece that I can use, like a hand drill, but it's it wouldn't work for this one. So I've just used this and I've put it quite far down as well. Anything close to the edge, it could possibly break. So I put it in the thickest part that you possibly can and then it will hold the weight. Okay, so now we're ready for mica powder. Now with mica powder, I have a little trick. I always use the lid. And the reason why I do this, because if I spilled this, it wouldn't be all that waste. It wouldn't be the whole part, it would just be that little tiny bit here. So I always put a little bit in the lid and then I go ahead and use it that way. So uh, I'm going to start here.
Okay, so I just got this out of the oven. Um, I've left it to cool for a little while, so I'm now going to release it from the tile. And this is what I was saying about using tissue blades. This is what I was saying about tissue blades. They're absolutely brilliant for getting something from a tile that you've just baked in the oven. And you just literally slide it all the way under. And it will release really easily, just like that. So there it is at the moment. As you can see, it's absolutely gigantic. But I really like it so far. There are some final things I'm going to do. This is quite pale in terms of the look of it, but I'm going to add some extra bits here. Now I've got some of these. These are, I really know what to call them. They're like gems, a bit of a dome shape to them. I'll show you this one for sort of size. They've got a dome shape and they've got a pretty colour. So I'm going to use a black one for the eye, so I'm going to do that one first. I'm just using normal super glue for this. And I've got some other things here now as well. Now I think these are bead casings. So they've got a hole in the middle. And I think what you would normally do is put a bead in the middle of them um, and then have them on the outside. I'm going to use these to sparkle up the uh, seahawks a bit more. I've also got some of these flat ones, so I'm just going to pop a few of those on as well. Okay, and lastly I've just got some really small ones and these are like a little bit of a light catcher so they're quite nice, I don't know if you can see that very well um, so I'm going to pop some of these on Okay, so here we have the fully finished seahorse. As you can see from my hand, it's extremely big. Um, I've just added the little, um, I don't know what you call them, sort of, they're like a dome shape with a flat on the end. I know there is a name, but I, I cannot say it. <laughs> um, and then I've just added some little details here as well. And then lastly, of course, to match, I just stuck some glue on the edge here and then added a little bit of glitter that was already mixed and now I'm going to add the ribbon and there we go so now we have the ribbon I like to double ribbon um, because it just adds to the colour coordination and it just gives it a bit of a different look sometimes I do uh, a darker shade on the inside and then a lighter shade so it seems through um, so there we go there is the finished seahorse. Well, there you go. That's how you make a seahorse. So I'll show you what the seahorse looks like now. So here we go. As I said, really big. Um, bit of a close-up. So the little gems that I added along here as well. They look really, really good. And there's the little anything and that is how you make a seahorse from Paul and the clay thanks for watching I appreciate all my new subscribers thank you very much it's going up day by day I'm really happy to have the audience that I've got now and um, keep watching for more thanks again and see you soon <laughs>